Nothing brings people together like La Ventanita. The walk-up windows where Miami meets to drink Cuban coffee and swap stories. I'm Carlos Frias, the Miami Herald food editor. In each episode of La Ventanita, we'll talk with some of the world's best chefs to get a window into their lives while tasting some strong Cuban coffee and some delicious traditional Cuban snacks. Jose Andres is a world-renowned chef and activist. He's fed millions of meals to Americans in Puerto Rico following Hurricane Maria. He talked to us about Latin culture. The Latinos, we are, we are intense. We're intense in the way we show passion, in the way we show commitment. His formative childhood. In the days that the refrigerators were small, my mom will make croquetas always at the end of the month. And the volunteer work that earned him a nomination for the Nobel Peace Prize. Sometimes when I see a plate of food like this, I cannot think uh, that in America we have more than 11 million undocumented, that they are part of the DNA of what America is. When he came to Miami, we fed him a box of Cuban love, croquetas and pastelitos. So I brought you the little white box of Cuban love, right? To, to a restaurant. To a restaurant. To a chef. To, a, to one of the highest Man. level chefs. Because he's you. Oh, not. because you only ever eat the highest, fanciest food, right? No, I ate everything. Ah, that's why. I'm an wine. open guy. So I thought... And what, thank you. Thank you for No, it's me. my pleasure. What, but I figure what's better than a box of patelito cubano and una colada. Venga, coladita. Listo. Shall, Shall I pour? Oh, of course. I love coladita. Oh, I, this is my favorite. I think probably is one of the things... This is the key right here. I really love. I love... You know, sometimes I go through Miami airport, mm -hmm. but I'm not coming to Miami. I'm going somewhere else. And for me, my best moment is to make sure I have enough time between planes to stop and have my little coladita. I love it. I really love it. Because there's something about it that it's, it's very simple. Cheers. It's very simple. Mm. It's, so not, it's not terribly hot how it should be. It made a little bit of a journey, but it'll... And the right sweetness. The right sweetness, right? Not too sweet, not too bitter. But I really sweet. But mm. who cares? I really <laughs> what do you what is it that you like about Cuban coffee, Cafe Cuban? It's intensity. I think it's not only obviously Cubans, but all the the Latinos. We are we are intense. We're intense in the way we show passion, in the way we show commitment. And I think, you know, sometimes quite frankly. If I'm going through Miami and I'm having like a down day and I get this, it's like, phew, like I come back. You're reborn, yeah. right? Do you want to go through a, a box of pastelitos? Uh, I'm not going to make you eat them all, but oh, let's, this is, what? if you go walk in there. Why are you not going to make me eat it all? Uh, are, you, are you insinuating no, anything? I'm insinuating okay. that, uh, that you don't need uh, it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to sign the release of this video. <laughs> <laughs> the, what do you want? <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, so they all come from the La Rosa? La Rosa, which is one of the bakeries that's been around almost I'm, 50 years. Okay, I've not been to La Rosa yet. Okay, well, that's why I'm, so, I'm glad that I could bring you a little something. If this is central Miami, like you have to really get in there to find this place. So the croqueta, the Cuban croquetas, very different <laughs> than La Española. Well, very different, but the same thing. The same heart. I mean, I don't want, especially the the Latino, the Cuban, the Hispanic brothers that see me, I don't want them to think here is this chauvinistic Spanish, but this is something very Spanish. Mm -hmm. We've been in Spain, I don't know, for how long, and, and obviously I want to believe this has been one of our good contributions. One of the greatest Ma exports. My mom will make croquetas always at the end of the month. Mm. In the days that the refrigerators were small, in the days that and we will not go to restaurants because even my mom and my dad were, they were middle class, they were nurses. Um, was the days that we would go to buy almost every day. You know, when now you go to a supermarket, you fill the car and you don't go until next month. Right. And at the beginning of the month, my father would get the paycheck. But at the end of the month, you could see that what already was like, empty refrigerator compared to, to today that I open my refrigerator and all it looks full. At the end of the month was like, it looked like new. It was almost <laughs> nothing there. But you will have the two eggs left, a little cup, 
with some of the roasted chicken leftovers. Mm -hmm. And then my mom will make the bechamel. We'll add some of that chicken, maybe a boil or two, boiled eggs. She'll make the bechamel. And that night, you will hear the doors opening, that sometimes was my door or my brother's doors. Mm -hmm. And that means the ritual of going to the kitchen without my mom finding out, opening the refrigerator, putting a finger a spoon, and then with the, the hands pushing the bechamel to try to <laughs> look Cover like, <laughs> like we never, nobody <laughs> ate it. And next morning my mom will wake up and the entire bechamel will look like, like, like the moon surface, <laughs> like with great craters and volcano look alike, fingers everywhere. And you and your brother like this. Uh, and who did this? <laughs> like Mariano, uh, Jordi. <laughs> so that's the memories that Croqueras brings to me. Right. Those moments were actually the best dishes were the dishes when we didn't have almost any food left at the home. But also was where my mom, when she cooked, always show up the best of her, you know, making almost out of nothing a great dish. Let's uh, let's try some of these pastelitos. What are you most interested in? Guava and cheese, well, guava. The croqueta the, was great. Of, of cheese. So those are sweets already. Yeah, these are all sweet. They're asking one of the, they make one of, of meat, and uh, but they were, they had, I, you know, it's uh, 4.30 in the afternoon, so they had sold out a lot of those around lunchtime with them, I guess. Como hoja, están hojadrados, ¿no? Uh -huh. the, 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 like puff pastry, right? Right, it's all these are puff pastry. Puff pastry with guava filling for the uninitiated is a mm. pastelito cubano. Still warm. The guava. So good. Mm. So battery. Oh my God, it's so good. What's going on here that makes this as good as it is? It's very hard sometimes to understand that behind something like this is the name and the last name of men and women that work long hours to make these things happen, to maintain the traditions, in the process, being able to provide to their family members. Uh, I do believe that we need to think sometimes uh, with a, a sense of trying to understand what's behind every one of the foods we eat. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm always fascinated, you know, who, who was behind this, who was the person that invented this, but then who was the people, men and women, who made this, right? And what are they thinking, and what are their dreams, and what are their suffering? And sometimes when I see a plate of food like this, I cannot think uh, that in America we have more than 11 million undocumented, that they are part of the DNA of what America is. They are taking care of golf courses, they are working in restaurants, in fishing boats, uh, in, 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 in farms, taking care of pork, of beef. Of, they are all around us. America wouldn't move without them, but some, somehow we don't want to recognize the real contribution they to that. That sometimes when I see these dishes is why I go through. The thinking that you can eat it and you just don't think about anything else, and you are entitled to do so. You know, every day, everything has to be thinking. You have to be moved by everything, but you're but right. I do believe that sometimes it's okay that we do the, the important play of understanding what it takes for us to be enjoying a moment like the one we're enjoying right now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think it's an important game that we all should do once in a while, because through every dish, we can be talking about how to improve immigration or working conditions or minimum wage, or, or, or history of who we are, or creating jobs, or being an ambassador to tell other people about our culture. Uh, oh my God, in one dish alone, we can be talking about so many things. Yeah. That's why sometimes it's important. We enjoy it and don't think about it, but I think it's once in a while, I try to tell everybody, go through the important game of understanding what it took for you to provide this food to your people. Absolutely. Shall we, shall we take one last taste here? 
I think I got, I got my sugar already. I love this thing, but you know, I have, <laughs> I have a line to protect. So yeah, you have to keep your your my, girlish figure. My, my body <laughs> has to be, you know, people have expectations. A temple. Me. It's a temple. Yeah, it's a temple, and I need to protect the temple. <laughs> Mm. Oh man, I'm having my sugar rush. Well, it's a little cold now. It'd be nice if it was hot. Um, is this a different product? Yeah, that's true. It's not bad. I, I'm actually, if we do a collada on the rocks, come here, I'm going to say that. Yeah, you got, you're coming up with some ideas right here. Yeah. I hope we see it here. This and a piece of foie gras, boom, we're in business. Wow, wow, I'm not, I would not, well, that's why you're the chef. That's why you're the world renowned Jose Andres. Miami. Chef, thank, thank you for you making the time. Thank you for having me. And uh, I, gl I hope you enjoy the pastelitos and it didn't destroy no, your form very much. <laughs> thank you, Chef.